Hey guys, John, I'm back again with another FSD video, this time highlighting some mistakes that FSD makes here in the northwest suburbs of Chicago. I have been testing and filming with FSD since October 2021, a lot of experience under my belt, and I will say, although it's gotten a lot, lot better, there are still areas that need improvement, areas where it makes mistakes, where it really shouldn't be making mistakes. Some of these are safety critical, but a lot of them are not. And the fact is it's gotten so, so much better, but we just cannot rely on it today. It's not at that stage where we can sit back and relax and have the car take us from point A to point B. I really look forward to that day when that is possible. But today's video is highlighting three situations. First of all, I wanna point out that my hardware three car, which is a 2019 long range rear wheel drive model three, just got an update to another version of 12.6.3 and that was on Friday, February 7th and that version is 2024.45.32.15. This is the same version that version 13 owners just received which is 13.2.7. I know it's a lot of numbers there but the point is is that they've merged the branches and Kalina Brown mentioned on X recently about that merge and why it's been taking so long. There were a couple issues that happened along the way. I had the pleasure of meeting Kalina in the, at the RoboTaxi event in California on 1010. Awesome lady, she is super smart and very, very responsive and super helpful. Uh, if you're not following her on X, definitely check her out. She posts a lot of different things from time to time, but there's so many people behind the scenes making things happen at Tesla. And you gotta remember, they're doing their very best to make this software as safe and as good as possible. And it's a learning experience. You know, they, they don't wanna admit the areas where it needs work, but I honestly think that after a lot of contemplation on this, that uh, hardware three vehicles are not only gonna need a hardware update as far as the CPU, but also the camera suite. And I think to go along with that, there is going to be a front bumper camera. This car comes with the Autopilot 4. It includes a much higher performance Autopilot computer, so new cameras all around the car. It also has a fascia camera down here. And it's 180 degree field of view, so we can see objects coming from either side of the car. All of this combines to hopefully never get you into an accident. But if you do, you're protected by the best passive safety system on the market, five-star ratings overall. And I really do believe that Tesla's gonna to have to make some modifications if they want these vehicles to be RoboTaxi capable to be able to clean, self-clean the cameras. So I think that's coming as well. And a testament to that is today I was driving around and my left pillar camera showed up as being blocked. And I was like, well, what's going on? There was some sun, but nothing unusual. And I started realizing, wait a minute, is it really blocked? Because then I turned a corner and that blindness message went away. And I got out of my car and I checked and sure enough, there was some condensation in there. The first time I've ever noticed that on my 2019 car in five years, to be honest, I've never seen that happen before. But it made me realize that that is one area that Tesla needs to account for and make improvements with. I have to add for the condensation on my camera, obviously we all know, and this is gonna come pouring into the comments, there are heaters in the new cars to help mitigate that. But my point is what happens when that heater is not working or you have an older car that doesn't have that heater. You know, there's so many vehicles on the road that Tesla wants to be able to turn into these robo taxis in the future. And it would be really great if they could just flip a switch and have all these cars operate autonomously. But the fact of the matter is that is not possible and only the newer cars have these heating elements. But more importantly than that, than that, what happens when they get dirty? You know, that heating element won't solve the issue. Let's say you have salt or dirt that covers the cameras. And I heard with the AI4 cameras, the shroud going around is not aerodynamic enough to prevent debris from building up on the lens. And if you compare that to the old uh, Model 3 or the Hardware 3 cameras, those stay cleaner for a lot longer. So the point is not that, okay, yeah, Tesla solved that for the A and B pillar cameras. The point is that 
this is an, a known issue and will continue to be an issue for the foreseeable future. Now, can Tesla come out with a mod kit that washes the cameras and sprays them? Sure, I hope so. Another option there is uh, to have, uh, like sim similar to teleoperators, you have some people that are stationed in certain areas that just go around and clean the fleet. Um, and that uh, maybe the, 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 the taxis, the robo taxis will have a, similar to like a gas station, they'll have cleaning stations or maybe when they're charging, they'll clean themselves. Uh, something like that is going to have to happen to make this future possible. So before you come shouting at me about how that's been solved, it really hasn't. You, let's admit that here straight out. Now, the other two cases that I wanna draw attention to here today is one of them related to snowy weather and inclement weather conditions. And these are, you know, something that a lot of people have to deal with in certain parts of the country. And I think you have to remember, this is re the reason why Tesla is rolling out their unsupervised FSD in California and also in Austin, Texas to begin with. It's because these areas don't have snow and they don't have torrential downpour rains. Well, maybe sometimes, but generally speaking, the weather is a lot better in those areas compared to others. So that's really why they're focusing on those areas first, but that is a major thing is weather. So you're gonna see a clip here of FSD losing traction on snowy roads and just not really being aware of it. It recognizes that the weather is not normal and it says FSD may be degraded, but you can still operate with it. And depending on your tires, there's a lot of factors, right? It does slow down, but it should recognize when it's slipping, especially when the traction control message shows up. Can FSD perform well in snowy conditions like this? In other words, the acceleration, because the first test, if you saw my first video, it constantly was spinning out. And I did not test the chill mode setting. However, I found out that the chill mode only applies really to highways as far as the FSD setting. There is now chill, there's average, and now there is also the, excuse me, it's chill standard hurry. And those really only apply on the highways. What's interesting is here, if I put it into drive, you can see it automatically mentions chill in the upper left, which I think is fascinating. Now, if I use the right scroll wheel and push over to the right, it will not change the setting. So when you're on the highway, it changes from chill to standard to hurry. But watch what happens if I go into the menu here, hit on the autopilot tab, and then change it to standard. See, it's not actually changing. So what is that chill? What does that chill mean? Because that threw me off as well. And that usually indicates the FSD functionality when you're on the highway. The only other thought I have is if you go in the dynamics tab, there's the chill acceleration and the standard acceleration. I'm gonna leave it in the chill acceleration. This is another thing I did not test when I was in wintry conditions, when I first got it. But let's change it here to standard. Look at that. You saw how that went away? So for those of you who are curious, if you see chill in the upper left, it does not apply to your FSD setting. That has everything to do with the acceleration setting. So let's leave it in the, in the uh, chill mode for acceleration and then test FSD running on these roads and see what happens. I really believe that we are gonna have it trip out. Now, it really depends on how slushy the snow is, right? I think that it's cold enough. Oh, it's 38, it's above freezing. Uh, we'll see. Uh, sometimes if it's super cold, the, the snow is crunchy and you get a little more grip. When I'm moving forward here, I think it's important to understand the limitations. I, I did test the slip start and apparently that does not apply with FSD enabled. And another thing is the tires. And I emphasized this in my first drive. Most of this is related to your tires. My tires have a thousand miles on them. It's really not that much. So these are, for all intents and purposes, these are pretty new tires. A lot of snow here. Just to emphasize driving manually, if I step on the accelerator, I'm slipping right now. And if you look on the screen, watch what happens. You're going to see on the on the upper left, under that speed limit sign, you see the slipping marks. So that is in, indicative of, you know, obviously traction control, uh, a traction control issue. 
So here we go. There it is, folks. I had a lot of pushback in my first drive saying, you're not using the chill setting. You know, that would fix it. Um, and I, I also pointed out in that video that it, it does not learn within the same version. So I could do this all day long. I'm do it again here. And it will continually spin out and it doesn't seem to learn from its mistakes here. So this is an issue. You know, it, it really should lower the acceleration. Now I'm gonna go in here and do another test with the slip start. In the dynamics menu, there's a slip start I can turn on here. I don't think this applies to FSD. Let's leave the menu system open here and turn on FSD. Yeah, see it um, automatically turned off. So it doesn't apply, even work with FSD. But here again, I'm gonna get the spin out. Now, I'm gonna say that I can drive completely normally here if FSD is not enabled. Watch what happens if I accelerate manually. I'm noticing these, the, the slippery conditions myself. My brain is processing that these roads are slippery and I'm purposefully not applying that much acceleration and my car can move just fine on these roads. Now, can that be addressed? I think so. Over time, I think that will get a lot better. The other issue is much more complicated, and this really depends on the driving conditions in, in terms of what cars are around you, what people are around you, what the maps data is saying. There's so many factors, and this was just one that made me very uncomfortable. I had a passenger in my car, and my car just did not do the right thing. And it was very uncomfortable. I thought it would sort itself out. It did not. I had to take over. It wasn't safety critical, but it was very disappointing. I have to mention here, a gentleman named Astro Pepe uh, messaged me on X after I posted about these um, disappointments, shall I say. And he said, you know, there's not really, <laughs> there's not really much use in reporting these issues for version 12 it's not gonna to help to improve version 13. And he went on to say that version 12 is just a stopgap for hardware three owners until we get the hardware upgrade. So is that true? Well, you know, I did some reflecting on that and I think it, it very well could be true. And the reason why I say that is because on October 30th, uh, 2024, uh, Tesla AI came out, it was actually oct October 31st, Tesla AI came out with a message saying that the 36 hertz full resolution AI4 video inputs were being used to train version 13. And it also said that native AI4 inputs and neural network architectures were being implemented. And we all know the data model sizes are a lot larger and that just cannot be compressed and optimized so easily for hardware three. But the fact that they're using all AI4 video input data really leads me to believe that we will be seeing a camera suite upgrade. There's going to be AI5, there's going to be AI6. <laughs> uh, Project RCC mentioned to me that there's going to be an AI10 in the future. <laughs> and it's just gonna keep getting better and better. Is it ever going to be perfect? Well, we all hope so, but I think that's where there's gonna be some teleoperators. Not enough people are talking about that. Tesla just started hiring a lot of people to help teleoperate their vehicles. And what that means is that it's just like Waymo. In the case where the vehicle gets stuck or it can't proceed, there will be a teleoperator that comes in and takes over and gets it out of that situation. And I really think we're going to start seeing that in the future. I had another comment come in from Astronut, which uh, this gentleman's name is Ashton. He said that he alternates between his AI3 Model 3 and, and Model S performance car running version 12.6.3 and his AI4 Model 3 car, which has 13.2.6 throughout the week as he travels the same route from home to work and he's running errands. And he mentioned that at certain intersections, he sometimes disengages with version 13, but not with version 12 and vice versa. And he said, overall, the driving experience can feel interchangeable at times. So this to me is very fascinating because it points to the fact that there is no perfect solution today, even with version 13. 
a lot of people are saying version 13 wouldn't screw up doing this or doing that when they see a version 12 video, but <laughs> I want to hear your opinions down below. I'm gonna show this clip here where it screwed up on version 12. I wanna know if you think it would also do the same with version 13. So, fuck, 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 fuck. This is not good. Yeah, keep this recording, fuck, 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 fuck. yes. Uh, hello. Because of this ass. Yeah, because of him. Go, 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 go now. Take it over. You can't let go. Yeah. Shit. What? Man. I had to take over there. You had to. No choice. Uh, yep. Yeah. That was chaotic. It was. That guy was not letting me in on uh, the right yeah. side. Yeah, he would not. I don't know what I would have done driving manually. Yeah. He would have stopped because it was his right of way. Yeah. You know, you the car had to slow down. Yeah. It did not. So he is angry. Oh, Tesla showing off. That was his anger. Probably. Yeah. Don't tell me it's going to turn left here. Come on. Done. Third bubble. Yeah. Let me know down in the comments. This is a very complicated situation, and I quite frankly thought it would handle it all on its own and sort itself out, but it clearly did not, and I had to take over. One other thing that I think is important to note is the fact that people are having all sorts of different experiences with 12.6.3. I posted my positive experiences overall. I'm having a great time using it. It operates very, very well, especially compared to previous versions. But other people are saying the opposite. They're saying that it's not doing very well and the hype was way, it was way overdone and so on and so forth. Well, I respect everybody's experiences and their opinions. I'm not gonna say that they're wrong and I'm right or, or I'm wrong and they're right. I, I, you know, everybody has different experiences. So it depends on where you live. It depends on the traffic. It depends on how much you've tested it. There are so many things to take account for. And the fact that we are getting these different experiences all over the place is quite frankly, really interesting to me because it points to the fact that there is so much variability with these data sets. And I think it just takes a, a massive amount of training data to really sort all this stuff out. And there, every area is different. The signs are different. The lanes are different. The vehicles, the, the density of traffic is different. There's just so many things to solve for. So we can't discredit the people that are having bad experiences but it is irritating, I will say, even for myself as a content creator to see these people ranting and not ranting, but raving about how awesome the software is and and just pumping, seemingly pumping it just because they want to uh, be pro Tesla. And <laughs> I don't want to ever come off as being that type of person. I always like to talk about the good and the bad, but um, it's important to just recognize that everybody's having different experiences and we have to respect that. We'll see you guys in the next one.